body temperature begins to lower as well, and you begin to feel colder and colder as the temperature drops, as it drops down to 45 degrees, down to 40 degrees. As it drops down to 35 degrees, your body temperature lowers with it. You begin to become very, very cold. Very, very cold. As the temperature drops down to 32 degrees, you're going to do what you can to keep yourself warm. Rub your hands. Rub your legs. Rub your face. Rub your head. Do whatever you need to do to keep yourself warm because it is very, very cold. And now the wind begins to pick up. A biting, driving wind that makes it feel even colder as the temperature drops down to 25 degrees. It's so, so cold. It's so, so cold. Just rub faster and faster. You're going to need to because the temperature drops again. If I touch on the shoulder, I'm talking to you. Go ahead, rub your hands, rub your legs, rub your face. Do what you need to do to make yourself warm. If you are fortunate enough to be sitting next to somebody, what will feel good is if you simply snuggle up to that person next to you and share some body heat. Go ahead. Everybody's very, very cold. They might need to share your body heat. So go ahead and snuggle up to that person next to you. It's quite all right. It's quite all right. They want to be warm as well. If you don't have anybody next to you, just rub your hands and legs faster and faster and faster. This is good. We're having a good time now. We're having a good time now. And now we are beginning to warm up as all this rubbing and snuggling is paying off. It does begin to warm us up. And as we begin to pull out of the polar bear section, the temperature rises and it rises back over freezing up to 45, up to 55. You no longer need to snuggle unless, of course, you've made a new friend. It rises up to 65 degrees back up to 75 and 85 degrees it's a beautiful beautiful day once again and once again you can smell something wonderful drifting by so breathe that in deep breathe that in deep and as you exhale relax a little bit more and all of a sudden joining us on our journey here today ladies and gentlemen is one of the zoo's favorite friends a monkey Yes, a free-roaming, very handsome, playful little monkey has joined us here today. And he is in a very, very playful mood. He's very, very friendly and does not bite. That is why they allow him to run around free like that. But he is in a mood to play. And he reaches out and he tickles you on the ear. He tickles you on the ear. He plays in your hair. And he is in a playful mood today. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he's in a playful mood today. He just wants to play, he wants to play with you. Oh yeah, woohoo, uh -huh. woohoo. Oh, yeah. And you can reach out and tickle him back if you'd like. Yeah, you can. You can reach out and tickle him back. Oh yeah. Reach out to him. Don't hurt him, he's not hurting you. Just reach out and tickle him back. Oh yeah. But all of a sudden that loud sound startles the monkey and he runs away. And he runs away, but because he was startled, and after all, he is an animal, he left behind a little something for everybody on their left arm. Seems, ladies and gentlemen, that the monkey had fleas, and now, so do you. There are now six fleas on your left arm, and they are beginning to scratch your left arm. Oh, my goodness gracious. But this is an interesting feeling. While this should be uncomfortable, it happens to feel good. It feels good to itch. It feels good to itch. So just itch, 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 itch. And the way to get rid of fleas, ladies and gentlemen, is simply to scratch them away and let them fall to the ground. As they fall to the ground, just stomp them out. Just stomp out those fleas. Just stomp out those fleas. But do so quickly. Do so quickly. Do so, do so quickly. But because fleas are very, very fast, do not let those fleas escape. But unfortunately, you were not fast enough, and one flea has now just jumped down the back of your pants and now biting you on your butt. There is now a flea digging into your butt, and he is digging hard. He is digging hard. But because you are ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to let anybody know that you have a flea biting you on your butt. So as discreetly as possible, as discreetly as possible, grind out that flea. However, with this clap of my hands, the flea digs in twice as deep, and he bites twice as hard. He bites twice as hard, but don't let anybody know. Do what you can to get rid of that flea. But unfortunately, with this clap of my hands, he bites it down five times as hard. And he is getting close to the danger zone. Hurry up and grind that out. Grind that out quick. Quick, quick. Almost got up. Oh, yeah. Finally, he is gone. Finally, he is gone. Sleep.
Finally, he is gone. And all this attention, however, has attracted, all this commotion has attracted the attention of one of the other zoo's favorite friends, and now walking up in front of the truck and keeping it from going is a giant gray elephant. And now you're looking up as this giant elephant is looking down at you. You've never seen a creature so big up so close. You're fascinated. You cannot keep your eyes off this beautiful creature as he looks right down at you. And now the elephant walks around to the left. He walks over to the right. He takes a walk around in a circle. He walks in a half a circle. And now you're staring at the elephant's giant butt. You're now staring at the largest butt you have ever seen in your life. And it is staring at you. And the more you focus in on that big giant butt, the funnier it begins to get to you. Because you've never seen a butt so big. And it's right there. You can almost touch it. You can almost touch it. And it's funny. Because you've never seen a butt so big. Holy cow. And now, the elephant squats down and does something not so funny. He begins to take a giant elephant poop right in front of you. Right in front of all of us, this elephant begins to take a giant elephant poopy. And there is now poop flowing out of this elephant's butt at a pace you did not think was possible. This is disgusting. But it is also funny because you've never seen poop flow out of a butt like this before in your life. Oh, this is gross, but it's so funny. It's so funny. And then we realize also, unfortunately, that we are downwind of what might be the most disgusting thing you've smelled in quite some time. And this is gross, <laughs> gross, gross. It will not make you sick. But with this clap of my hands, the smell gets twice as bad. Oh. Oh. oh, and it intensifies again as the poop begins to pile up. It's over a foot high. It's over a foot high and it's still going. And with this clap of my hands, the smell gets twice as bad again. Oh. oh, and as the pile of elephant poop grows to over two feet high, we learn, unfortunately, that the elephant has yet another problem. He has gas. Oh, 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 oh boy, oh, 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 good God, oh, oh, what do they feed these elephants here at the zoo? We begin to find out, things begin shooting out of this elephant's butt, corn, corn cobs, Celery stalks. Apple cores. There is a big brown cloud coming off this smoking pile of elephant poop. It is coming right toward your head. You can taste it in the back of your throat. Oh, oh finally. A nice stiff wind blows by and blows that stench away and in its place, the smell of your favorite flower. Breathe that in deep quickly. Breathe that in deep quick. Mm. Oh, such relief. And now the truck driver can continue on down the road. And you see over toward your left and up a platform. We're gonna get off on this platform here in a couple moments and begin the next part of our journey, which will take us out to Magic Island where anything can happen, ladies and gentlemen. But you look up on top of this platform and notice that looking right down at you is the ugliest looking kid you have ever seen in your life. He is just the ugliest, nastiest little boy you've ever seen and he is looking right down at you, making nasty, rude, ugly faces right at you. And you can't figure out why this rude, nasty little boy is making nasty, rude, ugly faces at you. But you look around, you don't see his mother, his father, an aunt or an uncle, any brothers or sisters, any cousins or any friends. And you say to yourself, ugly boy, one good ugly face deserves another. So go ahead and show that ugly boy that you can out-ugly him on any given day of the week. Make your nastiest, rudest, ugly face right back at that rude boy. Make that nasty, ugly face. Show him. 
show them that you cannot be out uglied. Now, you're all very good looking, so it's gonna be very, very hard to do. Just make your nastiest, ugliest face right at them right now. Show them you can do it, you can out ugly. <laughs> very well done, very well done. That got him, that got him, and now he is running away. You have scared him away. You have scared him away. Oh, now we can get off the truck. Onto the platform and walk down a path which leads to a dock. At the dock, ladies and gentlemen, there is a boat. We're going to take a boat ride out to Magic Island where anything can happen. So imagine now that we are getting on this boat, ladies and gentlemen. The first thing like everybody do is make themselves comfortable. Make yourselves comfortable. That's right. And now, because we're going to be out on the water, we're going to need to put on our life jackets. So down by your feet, grab a life jacket there, ladies and gentlemen. Let's grab a life jacket. Go ahead and put that on. Help your neighbor if you'd like. If your neighbor has any trouble putting your life on your life jacket, go ahead and help them put that on. Very well done. Now the captain turns around and he waves hello to you. So go ahead and wave hello to the captain because after all, he will have your life in his hands for the next five minutes. And now he begins to sail away. You can see Magic Island out in the distance, ladies and gentlemen, about halfway across the pond. You see a commotion beginning to stir. There is a big boat on an intercept course with our boat, followed by a bunch of small boats. The small boats contain all sorts of people, curiosity seekers, who have followed this big boat here today. The big boat meets us. It has an official from the zoo. The official from the zoo greets us and has just let us know that you have been selected to participate in a contest here today in which you could perhaps win $100,000. Who here could perhaps use $100,000, ladies and gentlemen? Raise your hand if you could use $100,000. Yeah, I could too, so I might join you here as well. That's right. And all these curiosity seekers have followed this boat because they want to see that you win this contest here today. They have all selected their favorite. They're all taking a look at you here, and they've selected their favorite. They are going to cheer you on in this contest today. As a matter of fact, they're going to start cheering for you right now. Your fans, your new fans are going to start cheering for you right now. That's right, because they want to see you win $100,000 here today. This contest in which you've been chosen to participate is a fishing contest. Whoever can catch the biggest fish here today will win $100,000. So now, what we need to do is take our fishing pole. The official is going to hand you your own fishing pole. Reach out and grab that fishing pole from the official at the zoo here today. Very well done, nice selection. Now the next thing we need to do, of course, is select some bait. Down by your feet, there is a bucket with some bait. Reach down there, pick out some bait. Dig in deep there. And hold that up. That's a nice big six inch worm. Nice and slimy and juicy. And the crowd goes wild because they see that you know how to select bait. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yes. They appreciate your bait selecting skills. They are confident now that you are going to be able to catch a fish with this beautiful juicy worm that you have selected. So now we need to bait the hook. Put that worm on the hook. And as you're doing this, the fans appreciate your baiting, your hooking skills, whatever you call it. I don't even know. But they love it. They love what they see you're doing. You're doing such a wonderful job. And as soon as everybody is done putting that worm on there, of course, what we will need to do now is pull back your rod and ready to cast out your line. Ready? Here you go. And the crowd goes wild. They see you've made a fantastic cast. They see you made a fantastic cast, and now we need to make that worm do its magic. Begin to work that pole around, ladies and gentlemen. Jerk the pole around so that worm will dance in the water and attract a really big fish. And the fans will cheer you on, and as they cheer you on, work harder, work, work harder, work harder. Work harder to try to catch that fish. Work harder, let's cheer them on. Come on, they're working hard for you. Let's cheer them on so they can catch this fish. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. They're working hard out here, and it's hot. And all of a sudden, you got a bite. You got a bite. It hit hard. It struck hard. This fish struck hard. Holy cow, you got a big one. You got a big one. Oh, and it's beginning to pull you over toward the front of the boat. Use your feet. Brace yourself. Do not let that fish pull you over the side of the boat. Do not let that fish win. Brace yourself. He pulls you over to the left. He pulls you over to the right. You pull back hard one time and reel in that slack. Reel in that slack. Reel in that slack. He pulls you over to the left. 
He pulls you over to the right. Pull back hard one time. Reel in that slack. Reel in that slack. He's getting a little closer now. Down by your foot, there is a club. Reach down. Pick up the club. Reach down by your foot. Pick up that club. Reach over the side of the boat. And beat that fish on the head. Beat that fish on the head. Beat him hard. Beat him hard. Don't kill him. Don't kill him. Just stun him. Just stun him good. Very well done. Now down by your other foot, there's a net. There's a net. Pick up the net. Reach over the side of the boat. Scoop up that fish. You've done it. You've done it. You've caught a big fish. And the crowd goes wild. The crowd goes wild. They see you have just caught a monster fish, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, indeed. If I touch you on the shoulder, I'm talking to you, miss. What kind of fish did you catch? A largemouth bass. A largemouth bass. Let's hear it for this young lady, ladies and gentlemen. It's got a big one, sir. If I touch on the shoulder, I'm talking to you. What kind of fish did you catch? A larger bass. A larger bass. That's right. A larger bass. That could be the winner. Could be the winner. If I touch on the shoulder, I'm talking to you, sir. What kind of fish did you catch? The biggest bass. The biggest bass. We got a large mouth, a bigger bass, and the biggest bass. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Oh, yes. Very well done. Very well done. You all have some wonderful, wonderful fish there. So hold it up one more time so your fans can cheer for you one more time. And suddenly the fish jumps off the hook and over the boat. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. The fish is gone. The fish is gone. Oh, no. You just lost $100,000. You look over the side of the boat. All of a sudden, the fish pops his head out of the water. He shows you his teeth. He's smiling at you. He pulls his flipper out of the water. He's flipping you off with his flipper. <laughs> this is the fish that just cost you $100,000. Miss, if I touch you on the shoulder, I'm talking to you. This is the fish that just cost you $100,000. What do you have to say to that fish? Stupid, stupid ass fish. That's right. <laughs> This is my touch on the shoulder. I'm talking to you. This is the fish that just cost you a hundred grand. What do you have to say to him? Oh! oh I couldn't have said that better myself. <laughs> Holy cow. Sir, if I touch you on the shoulder, I'm talking to you. That fish just cost you a hundred grand. What do you have to say to him? That damn fish. Yes. <laughs> That's right. And the fish swims away. And with it, go your one hundred thousand dollars. Oh. But the officials from the zoo did see that you caught a fish, and while they can't give you 100 grand because you let it get away, they don't want anybody to be unhappy here today. So they're going to give you a consolation prize. Reach out now and take this from the official. It's a golden ticket. It's worth $1,000 in cash and merchandise that you can redeem later. See Amy Stevenson. <laughs> and suddenly, as you are holding this golden ticket, you notice when you look around in the boat that's sitting in this boat next to you are a bunch of thieves, a bunch of scoundrels, the scallywags, and you have a very, very valuable commodity in your hands. So you want to make sure that you put that ticket in a place where no one's going to be able to find it. Put that, put that somewhere safe where no one's going to be able to find it. That's right, no one's going there today. Maybe tomorrow, but not today. And now, we can get out of here. But we turn around and notice suddenly that the captain is gone. The captain has abandoned ship. It just, he has decided to play a practical joke on all of us, and he has left us here floating around in the middle of the pond, and we need to get to Magic Island. Unfortunately, we need to impose upon you and do a little manual labor down by your feet. There are some paddles. Please be so kind as to pick up a paddle, an oar. And let's row the rest of the way there, ladies and gentlemen. Let's row, 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 and let's finish our way to Magic Island. As you are doing this, a couple things are going to happen for you. First of all, it's going to feel very, very good because, of course, exercise is good. And it's going to provide a nice, warm, tingly feeling for you the faster you go. So if you want to feel real good, just row even faster and faster and faster. And also what this will do for you 
if for some reason you have some sort of mental block, something that is keeping you from doing bigger and better things in your life, the faster you row right now, the higher you will be able to climb over this barrier, so you will be able to do bigger and better things and have increased in motivation to do better in your life. The faster you row, the better you will feel. And if you are a young person, you are rowing, when you get home, you are gonna just can't wait to clean your room here today. The faster you row, the better you will clean when you get home here today. That's right, faster, faster, faster. As a matter of fact, I clap my hands, double time it twice as fast. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> yes, and now we're reaching, we're getting there to Magic Island, ladies and gentlemen, so you can slow down and you can apply your water brakes. Apply your water brakes. Let's guide it in nice and slow. Ah, yeah, well done. Well done. Oh, we can get off now.